Hey all, this is the final video of my ZOHD Talon GT Rebel build before it's made in flight. So in this video um, I'm going to connect all the electronics to the flight controller and do a final check over all the settings on iNav and um, probably set up the flight modes and any auxiliary settings and probably also the OSD display. We'll also install the, the VTX and F. PV camera so it's all ready basically for the Talon's first flight. Hope you enjoy. All right so we're going to go to the go to the Maytag website here and we will select our flight controller which is the F405 WTE. Um, we'll go to the wiring tab and what we want to do first is see what's what here. So ESC signals going into S1 and S2 is for the second ESC if you have one and our servos go into S3 and S4 signal uh, signal wires up the top and where are they? there's the other one here signal wire up the top as well We'll pop them into there like that. I've already connected the SC, so that's that's it just there. Uh, the, the signal wire, I've unplugged the, I've cut the power because we don't need any power wire going into the flight controller because it's already powered direct from the battery. So uh, make sure you do that. Disconnect, cut it, just disable the power power cable of the ESC. So all you want is negative and signal, like I've got here. So we're connected into S1 for our ESC and our motor, our servo wires for the main ailerons anyway are connected into S3 and S4. So after this, what we'll do is S5 and S6 will be for the V-tail. Okay, so the V-tail here, it's the same situation. These two here, these two here are going to plug directly into the servos. Um, so what we need to do is these two here, I'm not sure which is which, so again, this is trial and error. We may have to swap them over. I'm gonna feed these through underneath the GPS and towards the, the flight controller. I'll tidy this wiring up afterwards too. I want to set it up and just make sure I've got the right wires in the right pins. So it's a bit of a guess this one. So what we'll do is just connect as is. So there's our four servos. Our four servos are connected. So that's our V-tail there. I don't think I will cut these wires off any shorter just because it's handy to have that bit of play. All right, so what we'll do, we'll plug it up and just see what we've got, power everything up, and just see how we're set. We, have, we've, we haven't tuned nothing yet, so still work to do. But we'll have a look. Welcome to HTX. And see what happens when we plug everything together. So that's a good sign. Well, our elevons, elevons, or elevators. Elevators are working, and there's our ailerons. So all the rear does is just acts as elevators, and the ailerons are yeah, purely just left and right for the ailerons. So. That will be interesting to see how well it goes up and down using just the V-tail. Could be interesting. I've got no mode set up yet, so we'll hop into iNav now and have a bit of a, a bit of a look there. Okay, here we are in iNav. This version is 5.1 I'm using, and probably by the time I do the Maiden, uh, I may even upgrade it to iNav 6 because uh, that's currently being developed so time will tell there when I go to Maiden that. 
Okay, first we're going to go over the setup and make final adjustments and do the checks before doing the maiden flight. So we'll go into the mixer tab. Uh, we'll see that uh, our servo setups on the V tail, we've got S6 for the right elevator, S5 for the left, and that's, that's for our elevator and rudder. Uh, and S3 and S4 set up for the ailerons. In our outputs tab, um, here I'm going to check motor direction by enabling the, the motors and lifting the motor, the master switch until the uh, motor spins just to check what rotation I've, I've currently got. Um, be sure, don't have your props on at this point because uh, you know you don't want to have fingers missing before your maiden, do you? Okay, over to the port tab. Uh, everything's basically set up correctly. Only change in my RX channel. Only change was that I've changed the RX channel to UR3 uh, as the onboard RX, uh, which which have now made inactive because I'm using the telemetry instead. That's set up on UR2 by default. All right, in the configurations tab. Um, everything's all set up here from uh, the previous setup. Uh, we'll go into the CLI tab now and we'll add in our modes and OSD setup plus a few other little bits and pieces from other planes. So basically uh, I keep a note, a notepad file for each of my planes and we'll copy the section from the modes configuration from uh, my Dart for example and paste it in here um, and then click save and reboot. So I copy all these from my other planes I'm happy with. Um, just want to have no confusion between uh, any of my planes during flight. So I keep all my modes and OSD exactly the same. We now go to the modes tab just to check to make sure all that's working now. And you can see all the uh, modes are there and working just like I've got all in my other planes. That's how I, I like it set up. Now go back to the CLI and repeat the copying process again. I'm going to copy all of the OSD setup from the Dart now. And then I'm just using the Dart for example. I've got other planes but I'm using the Dart at the moment. So we'll copy uh, all the OSD setup from, from our other plane and then click save and reboot. Right, we go into the OSD tab now and we'll just check out the check the setup is uh, being put on correctly and that it looks good. It's just a quicker way to set up a plane using previous configurations like your modes and your OSD. Um, you can also use launch settings too if you're happy with that. Um, just do it from other planes, it's a much quicker way. Although don't go copying anything regarding how a particular plane flies because all characteristics of different craft are all different so they should all be tuned the same way just because one plane you're happy with is tuned well doesn't mean that tuning setup is going to work on a on a totally different plane now back in the CLI again we're going to copy the settings like uh, my nav launch setup uh, mainly from my Dart because that's got a good setup on it and I also want to copy the RX setup as well because all my planes run Express LRS anyway. Um, the reason I'm using the Dart on this is because they're, they're both similar size planes and weight is very similar so there's no reason why the, the launch settings shouldn't work on, uh, on the Talon here. Like I said both planes are running Express LRS um, so the RX setup is exactly the same so after everything uh, is copied in there, just save and reboot, and we're basically done. So that was iNav. See, this plane here is very similar to my Dart XL, which I've got flying very nicely. So I'm going to take some stuff out of that, which I know works, and I've put it in the CLI on iNav for the Talon here because I know it's going to work. Things like the, the launch mode, just because I know it's already set up on that plane and both planes being kind of similar in weight and in size, um, it'll work fine for this as well. Some people say it's not a good idea to do on a maiden, but uh, oh well, I do it I like do it on my maidens. So if it fails, it fails. If it doesn't, well, it works on one plane, it should theoretically go okay on this, so we'll see anyway. Um, everything seems good. The only thing I've got to do is change the motor. The motor is spinning clockwise, which 
will loosen the prop. So I, I need to have that spinning the other way. So that when it's when the when the prop's spinning, it's tightening the nut, not loosening the nut. So all that's going to be is just a matter of swapping over a couple of wires uh, that connect from the ESC to the motor. Okay, so I've got a uh, I've got a few more pieces now for the that have come in for the talon. Uh, so I'll just run over what we've got here, just to run you keep you in touch. I'll put a display on the screen. I've got an air speed sensor for it here. This is a Maytech digital air speed sensor. I end up picking up one of these, which will help for um, its automated missions that I want to do with it. The FPV camera I picked up here also was on special. It's a Foxeer Cat 3 Micro Starlight Low Latency Camera. Um, very big lens on it compared to my other one, so it'll be interesting to see how well this one works at night or in, in low light. And the VTX that I'm going to be powering on my FPV feed is a Maytech 1.3 gigahertz uh, video transmitter. So anyway, that's about that. I'll get into it now. We're going to going to look at mounting mounting the, F, the, the video transmitter and the, and the camera in. All right. So the way we're going to set up the VTX here is it shows on the Maytech flight control website here. Uh, we're going to be using our ground and our positive. Will uh, positive pin will go into the VTX, and the ground will go to ground on the flight controller. Uh, we're going to use the, the video pin on the VTX uh, and that will go to the VTX pin on the flight controller. And then we'll switch over for the camera, the camera one there we're going to be using. I've only got the one camera and that will go into C1 using 9 volt positive and uh, the ground. All right, so that's how it shows it's set up on the Maytech website. Going to go that way. All right. So next step, what we'll do is we will put the video transmitter in its place here. No, I'm not going to glue it in just yet. And we'll roughly run our wiring, and we'll put some cables on the other end of the wire here. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to glue anything in place until I know it's 100% working fine. So my lengths are pretty good. I'm just going to tidy these up and then I'll uh, put I'll put my plugs on there for the flight controller. All right, cables all complete. Three plug on one end and I've got, I've got it split up the other end. Don't ask me why. Now this is ready to install. Again, I'm not going to glue it in or nothing yet. I'm just going to plug it up, put it in, put the aerial on, and then we'll start on the camera side of things. And then we'll test everything, make sure we've got video, feed, and OSD, etc., all that stuff. And then we'll glue it all in. All right, so we'll just make sure before we plug it in, we've got our wires in the correct on the correct pins. So yes, we've got the ground basically in the middle. It's the uh, if you're looking at the bottom of the board here. Uh, sorry, the bottom of the board where the where the capacitor is here. Um, we're going to be using these pins on this side over the, the very front. So we want to use ground 9 volt in the VTX pin. And we're going to push it right into that one right there. We should have power now. We might even test it and see what we've got. We'll put a battery in it and we'll test Make sure the VTX has power. All right, all good. We got power. All right, so next next part, we've got to make a cable up for this. Hot glue the camera in at that. Fits in perfectly. But for, before hot gluing the camera in, we'll, we'll test everything. Camera plug goes basically straight down into these two, into these three pins here. The ground five volt, 
or nine volt. I've actually, I think I've um, put mine up to 12 volt, I believe, my camera. And I'm using C1, which is camera one. I mean, using the one camera, maybe I'll stick another camera on again one day, who knows. So we'll power this up and just see what we have. Okay, so after a bit of fiddling around, we've got the VTX working. It's starting to get a bit hot, so I can't, I've got to make this quick. Um, it's hooked up with the ground positive and a uh, 9 volt VTX uh, wire, as it shows on the on the picture there. Uh, there's, there's the picture we've got at the moment. So I've had to go through the channels to find the right one. So it does work on the parton, which I kind of thought it would, or it should have, same frequency. But in saying that, I might still get a get the R the matching RX for the for the Matec as well, and run my other systems off the receiver off the Matec. We'll hard install everything now properly. Now that we've confirmed everything's working, I've just got this running on a low setting too at the moment, so. It's um it's warm but it's yeah it's it's holding its temperature pretty good it's not hot which is good to see the other um other video transmitters that are that I've got would start overheating a bit more by now but then again they're on high settings this is only on a low setting all right so we'll we'll re we'll install all this properly now and then we'll call it a night with it oh what I'm going to do with the VTX is just hot glue it in um and I'll finish it off with a bit of tape over it. So if the hot glue does melt with the heat of it, for whatever reason, which now it doesn't normally do once you're in flight, but if it ever does, the tape's gonna hold it in anyway. All right, so now that the camera's all put in, uh, and the video transmitter is in as well. We haven't secured everything totally just yet. It's running, that's the main thing. Um, there's a couple of other things I need to do. We're gonna do the airspeed sensor, but I don't know if I'm gonna worry about that just in this video, because it's something I think I'm gonna wait and do once the plane is tuned up and had its made, and then I'll install that. So I kind of, brings us to the end of this of this video before the maiden I don't think there'll be another video now until the maiden I've just got to tidy up a few things I've got to tidy up the wiring uh, tidy the wiring up under the wing here for the video transmitter and I like to put a bit of tape over all that so I'll, I'll do all that we're going to do another check on iNav um, I might even run through just before the maiden I might even run through my whole settings on iNav just to show you how, how I've got it set up for the Maiden. And yeah, that'll be about it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and um, any questions, just um, I'm happy to answer. If there's any questions that are, that are in my, in my uh, knowledge, feel free to ask in the comments section. But other than that, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoy flying still and keep with the hobby. Uh, rain, hail or shine, the hobby can be done inside and outside, remember that. So until then, stay safe, keep flying, and bye for now.